Hello everyone, and welcome to the first Key Text Direct of 2023. I cannot wait to share, to share some of these announcements to you. Now please be noted that all the announcements in this video are only solo videos only, and some of the release dates are subject to change. Alright, let's not waste no further time and jump right into it. Super Mario on mobile? In 2016, Super Mario Run came out from mobile devices and was mostly seen as meh. But what do I think of it? Find out when my review on Super Mario Run comes out on April 15th. Alright, time for the next one. Reaching far across these new frontiers. Please be good, please. I'm here, reaching for across these new frontiers. With my mind, my mind, this fear. In my hands, I hold the ones I love. Walk forward through the cold time. Always a new horizon. Previously announced in the November Key Text Direct, a review of Sonic Frontiers is coming out sometime in 2023. It will be going over a lot of the game, so stay tuned. Alright, now a special announcement for people who might have been here since Season 1, or Series 1 I should say. You might have recalled back in 2021, my old videos got deleted. Well now they're coming back in, in a whole new way, introducing Key Text Classic. A brand new channel that will be filled with classic videos from Series 1 remade in glorious 1080p 60fps. So be able to re-experience key text like it was back in 2018 to 2020. Now let's get into this next announcement. It's time to Wahoo like never before.
That's right. A playthrough of the obscure Quinoa Door Defense Mile will be coming to the Key Text channel sometime in 2023. Next up, take a look at this. Mario! 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 Me and Lewis played Super Mario World on the channel back in 2021, and if you remember that playthrough, well now, it's time to experience the game of Forfeit, with Mevin's Odyssey joining with me for the ride. Get ready for a playthrough sometime soon after we finish Super Mario 3D World. Here's another Mario playthrough. Take a look at this. I'm getting tired of new! It may be a cash grab, but new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is becoming a playthrough on the channel. In the playthrough, I will try be trying to 100% the game, as well as play Luigi U. The series will How's everything so far? I hope you've enjoyed everything that I've announced so far. I'm personally very hyped to see some of these things coming out. But now, we moved on to our last announcement, and I'm not the one to be nuts in this one. Instead, I have a guest with me. Please welcome... My good old friend, Nostalgia Entertainment. Thank you, Keytex. So, with this Keytex movie, I want to give you guys some updates for this movie. First, as you may or know, I'm not going to be on the channel for as long as you guys expect it to be. I'll be leaving the channel at some point in September or August due to me going to an adult program. But we're, we promise we're getting this movie as soon as possible. Thank you guys for, for your patience. I want to give you guys some information about who I'm going to be playing as, and we're also going to give you something pretty special today. For me in this movie, I'll be playing a narrator in this movie. I'll be playing a narrator some in the beginning and some of the end of the movie, but it's not a main character. It's a side character for this movie. Unfortunately, we do not have a trailer today. However, we do have a five-minute preview of the Key Ticks movie. So grab a candy bar and go grab a soda. Please take a look.
I would say he started to decline after Heroes, but definitely was not received well when Sonic like 06 came out. Of course, this was obviously because the game was rusty on the Wii, and the people who were working on Sonic like 06 went on to make Secret Rings instead. But hey, now let's not dive into that topic now, because what I'm about to introduce you to what, in my opinion, is peak Sonic. Sonic Adventure may have been released in 1999 or 1998 for Japan people, but god damn it, it was so impressive for the console it was on. And because it was a launch title for Sega's brand new console, the Dreamcast, after the Sega Genesis, it turned out that Sega was a bit behind the industry, as with the next console, the Sega Saturn was capable of playing 3D games, thus making it a console that sold terribly. Although it was capable of playing some 3D games, but not mostly. But the Sega Dreamcast is looking like to be the star of the show here, it can play 3D games and finally compete with Nintendo and Sony. They didn't. Yes, while the Dreamcast was a very underrated console, I mean seriously, why the hell is this not on the Switch? I'm like, switch it back, come on. So like I mentioned, it was a launch title for the thing, and it looked so crazy at the time, and to this day, it was the hardest Sonic game to make according to Sonic Team. But damn, was the wait worth it. There was multiple character stories that connected to several events, fantastic stages, and fantastic looking visuals at the time. I can imagine Sonic fans saying the first level and having their jaw be absolutely dropped. But of course, my time with Adventure 1 didn't mainly come from the character stories, it was actually the Child Garden of all things. A feature that was never seen again after the first two Adventure games. However, there are more versions of the Garden than just the Adventure games. So I'm gonna take a look at each Garden that I can think of. First up, oh yeah, this is happening. When this was the first game to introduce Chow to everyone, they were sort of part of the plot in the game. Not really much, but where they really shine is with the Chow Gardens they live in. Chow are made out of clear water, don't believe me? Why does Sonic Runner say that then? However though, they're made of literally water, they cannot swim. At least when they hatch. You see, this is where the animals that you collect in the main game become useful. Because upon finishing the level and going to the garden, you can give the animal to them and it will raise their stats. There are a total of three gardens in Adventure 1. There are the Station Square Garden, which you can find by going inside of the elevator and from the first hotel. The second one is in Mystic Ruins, and you go there by taking a minecart somewhere in the- <laughs> But it's been a while since I've visited the Ruins Garden, honestly. And finally, the Egg Carrier one, which is located upstairs of the Egg Carrier, then eventually you find a thing that has letters. Spell Eggman, and, and you're set. Although, one of the most interesting chases, chases, changes that they made between the Dreamcast version and the DX version is that they changed the ruins and carry gardens, and also the Station Square, but that one's not really that much of a big difference. Like, a whole bunch. Kinda is boring, honestly. I mean, you got this cool bridge and all that when it comes to ruins, and then you got all these, you know, insane things. Like, just compare the two. And then we got the Carrier Garden, which, what the hell happened here? We went from having this extremely cool underwater thing to just being barely even shallow water and not even places to go up. I mean, I feel like they made it like this so that way you'd actually be able to pick up your chow out in the water, which makes a lot more sense. Anyway, on to the chow themselves. There's five. <laughs> five stars. There's five exact stats. And two hidden ones. There's swim, which when you get 100 points, instead of them just, just really just drowning, it will begin to swim. Then there's fly, which also does the same thing. Get 100 points using animals, and it will start flying instead of falling. Run is next, and it's pretty important, but we'll get to that later. This one has actually three stages. There's crawling, walking, and running. Although I'm not too sure what the requirement is for the running, though. And then, of course, it's just 100 points for walking. Then there's power, which, well, makes the thing more powerful. And there's no requirements on that. Basically, for just literally zero points, your child will be able to climb and do all of that. 
And if you're playing the Dreamcast version, there's a stat called HP, which means instead of going up, it goes down. How does it do that? Well, only it goes down if you start throwing it, and if it reaches zero, the chow dies. Pretty damn depressing, because this is the only game where you could achieve total chow extinction. Now, get serious. When you get bored of just racing these guys, and you think they're good enough for, you know, just think your stats are good enough, it's time to take on the races. There are several races in the first adventure game that test each ability that your chow has, and you're gonna have to get first place, otherwise it's gonna count as a loss. And damn are your first game's races hard. I have my stats so high, and well, my chow fell asleep. Time to start over! The sleeping gimmick is so annoying, especially when it happens right when you're near the finish line, these are nearly 3 minute long races that if you fail, you have to watch all over again all because your chow fall fell asleep. Absolutely terrible. I guess there's one more thing to mention about the races, is that not only are they stupid hard, but they count towards completion too, since you get emeralds, which are of course, you get from completing levels in the base game. And then there's this thing that happens randomly where sparks appear around the chow, and pressing gate proceeds to boost the damn thing. I know we were getting fucked by the crazy level design and I had to deal with my child falling asleep all the time. Come on, I don't want you to win. Why would I be trying to help you? Anyway, that's all I gotta say about Adventure One's Chow Garden. Overall, not too bad, but I give it a 7 out of 10. The races are way too long and there really isn't much to do at the night. Music's a bop though. <laughs> Alright, now it's time to move on to the next game. Your shoddy craftsmanship brings shame on all hedgehog kind. So, what do you guys think of the movie? Please look forward for the Key Text movie releasing sometime this year. Back to you, K Key Text. Thank you for that nostalgia entertainment. I hope you guys enjoyed this year's or this month's Key Text Direct. I really put a lot of effort into this video, and I really appreciated uh, how well it turned out, specifically. There was a lot of things I liked doing. As hard as some of the trailers were to make, I'm glad I was able to share them to you guys. And do not worry, when this Direct drops on YouTube, I'm going to be posting all the trailers in their separate form on YouTube. Aside from the 5-minute sneak peek, I probably will be putting that on YouTube as well. But all the separate trailers and the 5-minute sneak peek will all be available on the Key Text Deluxe channel. Something about Key Text Classic, though, I you guys will have to wait for information on that channel. As right now, I don't have any plans as to what video to bring back yet. Alright, that's all for now. And I hope you guys have a great day. Take care. <laughs>